This is Mark J. Moon, Assistant Professor in the Department of Religion and Philosophy at Hong Kong Baptist University. This is a video abstract from my article, Why the Teleology of Marriage Matters to Law, an article published as part of the Evangelical Philosophical Society's web project for philosophical discussions of marriage and family topics in the year 2015, available at epsociety.org. This article actually grows out of conversations I had on the internet about same-sex marriage during the run-up to the big Supreme Court decision in 2015. I had these conversations on a conversation website called ricochet.com. And this conversation, uh, well, these conversations were between lots of different people, very diverse people on uh, different sides of the issue, uh, different analyses, uh, different backgrounds. And um, uh, as a result of participating in these conversations, I had come to understand this interesting argument for same-sex marriage that was consistent with originalism. In fact, it grew out of originalism, or relied, relied on originalism. Originalism is the theory in law that the meaning, at least in American law, that the meaning of the Constitution only changes when the text of the Constitution changes. So the meaning of the 14th Amendment uh, is the same now as it was in the 1800s. It didn't uh, have one meaning then and pick up a new meaning later. It's stuck with its original meaning until we change that meaning by changing the words with another amendment, um, if, we should, if we should ever bother to do that. Now, uh, there's this interesting argument for same-sex marriage that actually relies on originalism, and I had uh, been skeptical of the possibility of such an argument. So, uh, through conversing about this on Ricochet, I came to understand these interesting uh, these interesting perspectives, and I came to understand this argument. So, in my article, I articulate the argument, and I proceed to critique it, because it seems to me that it relies on an interesting premise. It's a premise about uh, the teleology of marriage, or perhaps that we should say the lack thereof, and perhaps we should define the term teleology. It refers to uh, the purposes built into things. A pen has the purpose of writing. Uh, a teacup has the purpose of holding tea. The eyes have the purpose of seeing. Uh, the ears have the purpose of hearing. These are the purposes and the natural functions built into these things. And there is a theory about marriage that it has a natural function and a, uh, an essential function, an orientation, a purpose. And uh, this theory is not so popular anymore. And the argument actually relies on rejecting that theory. This interesting argument for same-sex marriage based on originalism seems to rely on a different definition of marriage, a non-teleological one. And that, uh, I thought, was a weakness of the argument. Uh, what it leads to is that, at least as far as the theory of originalism is concerned, this argument doesn't seem to go very far. And um, I try to explain this in my article. And I also suggest that since theologians and philosophers are the kinds of people who actually study things like teleology, and since theologians and philosophers are the kind of people who study what people think about things like teleology, theology and philosophy are very relevant to the study of law. Now, this does seem to presume originalism. Uh, understand that if we reject originalism, this thesis might not hold. Uh, more precisely, the thesis is a conditional statement given originalism. If originalism is the case, theologians and philosophers are um, uh, people who study something relevant to the understanding of the law. They're the people who study the, the definitions of these things that were presumed uh, by a certain uh, by people in a certain cultural context uh, that we don't have anymore. After the sexual revolution, we've lost this uh, teleological understanding of marriage. Interestingly, if you look at all the amicus briefs submitted to the Supreme Court uh, for this particular case, you'll find quite a few uh, theologians or philosophers who have submitted uh, their perspectives on the subject. And in my article, I suggest that that was appropriate. I recommend my article for anyone to whom this topic seems interesting, I suppose. And uh, again, it's available at epsociety.org. Thanks for watching.